no, no, no. Come on, more applause. More applause. We have David, the attorney that rocks Comey in the house tonight, guys. He is literally in the backstage right now, ripping phone books in half with excitement. Uh, before we get the show started tonight, I have a little personal announcement I'd like to make. Uh, I just completed my final college class yesterday. I am yeah. graduating from here. I'm 27, so don't <laughs> applaud that much. Um, I don't really have a joke for it. I think the joke comes next week when I start looking for jobs. <laughs> Here's a news story that I'm pretending to remember just now. Uh, a federal judge ruled that the morning after pill, better known as Plan B, should be available without a prescription to anyone age 15 and older. That's, that's, that's good, that's good. Let's, yeah, we're pro that. Everyone should be excited about that. Uh, it's a, obviously a major victory for reproductive rights, but it changes nothing for 15-year-old me. <laughs> Continuing with the political news, uh, detainees in Guantanamo Bay are on hunger strike right now over the fact that they've been illegally held in a secret prison for the last decade. Uh, concerned about malnutrition, the White House announced that they will be switching to vitamin waterboarding. <laughs> I'm, I, what, what, flavor, what flavor do you use for that? Revive? <laughs> we were looking at the flavors backstage and there's a green tea one called Escape. <laughs> Don't use that. <laughs> Let's see, what else is in the news? Oh, uh, the World Wide Web turned 20 years old this week, which means it just now stopped listening to Green Day. Uh, <laughs> of course, this marks the other anniversary, the 10-year anniversary, of the last time anybody said World Wide Web. <laughs> it's 2013, I think we've all agreed, it's the information superhighway. Uh, a little bit of celebrity gossip. You guys like celebrity gossip? <laughs> Kim Kardashian's former sex tape co-star Ray J took a jab at her and her soon-to-be baby's daddy, Kanye West, by releasing a song called I Hit It First. <laughs> this is true. This is exactly the kind of classy maneuver you'd expect from a guy whose claim to fame is promoting his own sex tape and being the sibling of a 90s UPN star. Uh, <laughs> Fortunately, after a heartfelt conversation with Kardashian, Ray J and his record label have announced that they will be retracting the song and re-releasing it as I Hit It 31st. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. That's, that's a low estimate. We're low-balling her, as many others have. Uh, oh, man, groans. You guys are going to like this next joke. Uh, Norway is having a garbage shortage. As Americans, I think we understand those words, but not in that order. <laughs> but Norway burns their garbage as a fuel source to power cities, schools, and other things. So since they're running out, they have had to ask other countries if they could borrow some of theirs. To which Mexico replied, Norway, Jose. And a little bit of space news uh, on Mars. NASA's twin exploration rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, have accidentally drawn what looks like a large penis on the Martian surface. Uh, asked to comment on the incident, NASA said, hey, it's not our fault. Mars shouldn't have passed out on the couch with its shoes on. <laughs> Punk ass planet can't party. Guys, I am really excited. I think this is going to be one of our best episodes ever. We have a desk now. <laughs> Holy smokes. Check this out. All right, sitting at my desk. We're very excited now. We have a brand new thing that we've never done before. We are about to answer a question that I know has been driving many of you wild. Do random drunks on 6th Street know more about nuclear physics than a nuclear physicist? <laughs> In order to solve this age-old quandary, I would like to invite a nuclear physicist, my father, Mark Tignell, to the stage. Thank you for being on my show, Dad. Good evening, folks. 
Oh, look at that. Skilled performer, you know where I got it. So we went out on 6th Street with our crack camera crew and we asked random drunks to define difficult terminology from nuclear physics. So let's get it started. Gulan, that sounds like boo. Gulan, that's when um, your strap on breaks and you have to. <laughs> What? Blue on? Blue on. Weave. Tracks. Tracks. You know quick what? weave. Quick weave. Quick weave. Blue on hair. Quick weave. Yes. That's what I'm thinking. Got that's it. what I'm thinking. Tracks. Oh, your nail. I feel like that's wow. track. Like, you're going to glue on your track. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean glue on? Blue on. Blue on. Um, <laughs> who are these brides? <laughs> Dad! Oh, oh, these are my friends. Butter bombs. Butter bombs. Hey. Wait, what is this for? Am I what is on this CNN? Yep. It's Girls Gone Wild. Go for it. This is Girls Gone Wild. A glue on sticker. <laughs> they were pretty close. Oh yeah, uh, I'm not sure I can do better than that. Let's give it your best shot. All right, so everybody's seen the model of the atom with the nucleus and the electrons whirling around. Well, inside the nucleus, we all know there's a couple of kinds of particles called protons and neutrons. But it turns out that the way nature's built is kind of like Russian dolls. So inside of those are a couple of other kinds of particles called gluons and quarks. So quick weave, basically. <laughs> Nuclear quick weave. All right, I think that is one point for my father. Yeah. Let's see how Sixth Street does. Let's roll the next one, Daniel. Type of charcoal that you used to draw. Graphene. Graphene. Sounds like graphite, is that a word? That yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it is, right? Is it like a drug or? New drug in town, I don't know. It sounds like graphene, which is someone addicted to graphite tennis rackets. Well, graphene sounds like a dope fiend. <laughs> sounds like know. some sort of research chemical. Is that like the new bath salts? <laughs> oh. should, should parents be worried about graphene? Uh, no, they shouldn't. But one of those almost had it right. Graphene is a form of carbon, like graphite is, and it was recently discovered, and I think it was the 2009 Nobel Prize. Turns out that if you take scotch tape and you apply it to some source of graphite, like a pencil or something, you can peel off a layer that's one atom thick, and then it has fairly amazing properties. So someday, electronic circuits are going to be made out of this, and they're going to be much faster than silicon. That's actually really cool. I don't have a joke for that. That's, that's probably the scotch only, tape, ladies and gentlemen. Probably the only Nobel Prize that's ever been awarded for the application of scotch tape. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that guy with the face tattoos has tried to do graphite, though. Yeah, I, he might have. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's go to the next one. That's two points from my father. He's crushing it. <laughs> a unit of measurement. For a magnetic field or something? That, that's Magnetar. That sounds like a Pokemon. Giant robot. Yes, a robot. Giant magnet robot. <laughs> that attracts metal. That's not like a Pokemon. <laughs> like, a, like a Pokemon. <laughs> Doesn't it? Magnetar? Magnetar a guitar? Uh -huh. It sounds like magnitude something like lava. That's, that a sounds, that's a Pokemon. Pokemon. That's, yes. <laughs> yes, it is a Pokemon. Okay. All right. What actually is a magnetar? Magnetar is a very dangerous object in the universe. Some stars, when they get old, they explode in supernovas, and lots of things can happen after that. The supernovas themselves are quite dangerous, but sometimes they will collapse into an extremely dense object called the neutron star, and they can also get whirling around very fast when they collapse, just like when a skater is on ice and she pulls her arms in and goes faster and faster. Well, if you do that to an extreme, you can end up with a neutron star that has an enormous magnetic field. And then all the stored energy and rotation can get spit out in blasts of gamma rays that can fry anything in the vicinity around the galaxy. That is a really good guess. <laughs> Daniel, can you play it? It's actually a Pokemon. <laughs> can, you, can you pause it? Okay. Well, actually a Pokemon. So that is one point for Sixth Street, <laughs> two points for my father. Good try. That was oh, a really good try. 
Can you play the next one? I don't know, like cork, like cork yeah. on a bottle. That's the one. I don't know. Quirky, quirky. I don't know. Yeah, cork, you're, cordy, cordy. Uh, isn't that a subatomic particle? Like a very small, small <laughs> that makes up atoms. Yeah. Okay. I know that one. A twerk and a quart. <laughs> you are twerking a quart. Uh, we can definitely twerk. However, we will not twerk on camera. Twerk, twerk, twerk. 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 Can you guys twerk, twerk. for us? Yeah. They can. Oh. <laughs> All right. Now, can you define twerk for the studio audience? <laughs> um, twerk. <laughs> is that something like tweeting about a twerk? No, 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 I'm sorry. It is a form of booty shaking dancing. Uh, <laughs> so they not only got subatomic particle they right, that one. but they're also one point up on you. So I think that's 2-2. Two, two. Am I doing my math right? Let's say 2-2. Two, two. All right. Dead tie. Six street drunks, nuclear physicist. <laughs> Let's keep it rolling. Hypernova. I smoked one of those one time. Hypernova type of speed. <laughs> the fastest fucking person in the world. Yeah. Hey! Hurricane! Yeah. Hurricane! Yeah. Sounds like a large explosion. <laughs> a star? That has exploded. That's a supernova, but, you know. Oh, that's like a supernova, like, uh, but, but bigger. But bigger than supernova? It's hyper bigger than super? Oh my god! Is it though? I don't fucking know. Devin, they got it. They got it? They got it. Yeah, let's... Oh man. We really celebrate. Three there to two. Is some value in taking science classes, I guess. But her question is hyper bigger than super? It is, yes. Hypernovas are the biggest blasts in the universe. And yeah. they're gigantic stars that blow up and they spew out gamma rays that you can see from across the whole known distance of the universe. So we actually got this guy to rap about all of these, these terms for us. And we're going to play a quick mini drinking game. There's a lot of drinking games tonight. So every time he says, I do it every day, you got to take a drink. So let's play the clip. Man, I keep the game magnetized, tell you what the glue on. Do it every day when I hit you with the buckyball. Do it every day, just make it graphene. Tell you what it is when I make that bitch quark. Do it every day with the hype. Fucking over. Tell you what it is, going like a supernova. Tell you what it is, just going with my clover. Do it every day, man. You know what it be. Going like this, yeah. I'm a damn MC. Yeah. All right. That's real talent there, Devin. That's real talent. I'm not even gonna ask you to touch that one. Uh, I couldn't. Who knew that rapping just involved saying do it every day? <laughs> Over and over. I think that's literally what he does every day. Well, actually, let's give a big round of applause for my father, Mark Tingnell. Thank you. He spent a lot of time in school, flew all the way from Massachusetts to be here. We're very lucky to have him on the show. Up next, this is a very big treat. We have the very funny comedian, Katie Pengra. She's one of my favorites. She performs all over town. She's great. So give a big round of applause for Katie Pengra. You're very welcome. Service. Do a good job. With a smile. <laughs> Guys, David Comey, the attorney that rocks, is right back there. <laughs> I'm too nervous to talk to him. He could hear me right now. Uh, he has great forearms, I just wanted to say. Ladies, look at the forearms when he comes out here. It's weird, but super hot. Uh, <clears throat> good. I feel like I feel like I should like connect with you guys. I feel like I need to make a connection. Um, is anyone else here? feel like uh, they're missing the part of their brain that allows them the capacity to fully love another human. <laughs> okay, good, right up front. God, I should have known. I had a feeling about you. I had a feeling about you. You looked dead inside too. Um, I knew it. It was the colors in the plaid. You're trying too hard. Uh, I know, you're empty, you're empty. Uh, good though, no that's, but see I say that because I mean, not only am I emotionally stunted, 
Uh, but I have never been as excited or impassioned about another human being as middle-aged women are about unexpected avocados on a restaurant salad. <laughs> Stick with me, let's go on a journey. You're at Applebee's on an idle Wednesday. The front door is open and a gaggle of office gals come in with their comfortable linen pants, maybe some blue eyeliner. Why? Because it's Wednesday, it's hump day, it's salad day, get sassy. <laughs> the sound that emits from that booth as soon as those salads hit the table is second only to a pig at slaughter. <laughs> it's just like, oh! Oh, I love a good avocado, Debbie. Oh, God, they are so green and ripe and so buttery. Oh, God, so buttery. My goal as a human being is to one day look another human being in the eye and say, I want to spend the rest of my life with you with as much sincerity and passion as those bitches say the word buttery. Oh, so buttery. It's just weird, am I right, Solus guy? <laughs> After party at the Grackle. Yeah, go get our plaid party on. Um, uh, I just, I shouldn't be mean to those women. They're probably all in Weight Watchers and have nothing to live for. Um, <laughs> I actually, I've been on a queso bender since I've lived in Texas. Uh, <laughs> ooh, liquid cheese for the win. And a friend of mine was like, oh, you know what, if you're feeling weird about that, you should actually come with me to a Weight Watchers meeting. I was like, oh gosh, that sounds like giving up. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and she was like, no, 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 it's great. If nothing else, we can make fun of the girls that are fatter than us. It's like, Jesus Christ. That's a great idea. Uh, so we go, and it's weird because I don't have the same issues as these women. It's like a support group, and they're all like sharing their stories. It's like, oh, that son of a bitch husband of mine left me after 14 years, and I have four children that I hate, and buying organic is hard. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, okay. Uh, hello, I also have a family. <laughs> Size bag of Cheetos. <laughs> Just discovered smoking weed this year, so uh, sometimes I just lay in bed all day and I eat the whole bag of Cheetos. <laughs> and then I have to wash my pajama pants sooner than I wanted to. Because <laughs> I didn't have orange handprints down the front of them. <sighs> That's not true. Everyone knows you don't wipe Cheeto dust off your hands. <laughs> you wait till it's like a quarter of an inch thick and then you scrape it on your chest until it makes a new Cheeto you can chew again. Suck it, wait, watch us. <laughs> I was asked to leave, much like I'm being asked to leave here, guys. My time's up. I'm Katie Pengra. Thank you so much. Give it up for Devin. Thank you very much. Katie Pengra, everybody. All right. I would like to bring my producer, co-host, sidekick, teammate, call him what you will. Joe Biden, anybody? Nobody? My vice, my vice host to the stage, Odin Amador. For what we like to do, now that we have a desk, a desk piece. It's a tradition on late night talk shows. Now that we have a desk, we can actually pull it off. And with summer rapidly approaching, especially here in Austin, uh, people are getting ready to go on little vacations, little vacays. So we wanted to give some friendly advice because though things can be expensive. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a little piece we like to call budget travel. Oh. So next slide, please. If you can't afford, afford to visit New Orleans, just wake up hungover to the Girls Gone Wild DVD menu. <laughs> if you cannot afford to visit Seattle, Load the bong, dude. Frasier's on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Can't afford to visit the Vatican City. That can be pricey. Just get your grandpa to wave to you. <laughs> Odin's actual grandpa. Hi, grandpa. 
can't afford to visit Reno. It is the biggest little city in the world. That's an easy one. Just break up with your girlfriend in the laundromat. <laughs> What's great is that if you search for arguing with girlfriend in laundromat, stock photo sites have you really well covered. <laughs> There's a bunch, guys. A bunch. Apparently that comes up. I'm, Vogue editors are going, oh, where are we going to find this? No, stock photo sites. Got it down. Let's go to the next one. Can't afford to visit China. That is far. Ruin your own internet by installing parental controls. <laughs> Web page blocked, I really am on vacation. All right, if you can't afford to go to the movies, those ticket prices, just use Onan's Netflix account. Wait a minute, wait, wait, whoa, 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 guys. Can we change that slide? No, I like oh this my one. Oh God, this is This is all true, by the way. Folks, folks, folks. Odin not only has an AOL.com account, he still calls it the World Wide Web. Hey, Odin, what are you going to do today? Surf in the net. Ay, ay, ay. Let's get personal, guys. No, no puns yeah, now, buddy. Me. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, this is, a, this is a big one. If you can't afford to go to Mount Everest, just tell people you went to Mount Everest. <laughs> I love oh. that, like, Devin grew his beard up on the climb up, but I'm, like, perfectly shaved. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun trip. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. You guys don't know we didn't go. All right. Can't afford to pay for airfare to go to your ex-girlfriend's wedding. Just like all of her vacation photos at four in the morning. <laughs> Equal awkwardness, but you have that nice buffer of being in your own home. I feel like the one on the right's name is probably something like Geneva or something. It's like I like wearing like flowy dresses. And the one on the right is the one that you would go home if you went to the actual wedding. That's, that's what you would be going for. Thanks, Devin. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I meant you in a general sense. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, Odin. Uh, can we go to the next one, please? Florida. Everybody loves Florida, right? <laughs> Everyone in the audience is shaking their heads. <laughs> well, don't worry. If you can't afford to go to Florida, no worries. You can get a sunburned penis anywhere. <laughs> He knows it. All right. Mickey Rourke? That's Mickey Rourke modeling for that one. Uh, Burning Man. Can't afford to visit Burning Man. Again, sunburned penis. <laughs> it can happen anywhere. Mars. Can't afford to go to Mars. That is pricey. That's easy. Get the memory implanted. <laughs> Possible side effects include screaming the word Mars. <laughs> and finally, the future. If you cannot afford to visit the future, let these guys watch your drink. <laughs> you will travel hours into the future. <laughs> All that right. Travel's possible, guys. And that is what we like to call budget travel. <laughs> Guys, this is the big enchilada. We are very excited right now. This is a huge deal. You have seen his billboard. You might have seen his TV commercials. The myth, the man, the legend. Big round of applause for David Comey! <laughs> Welcome to the show, David. Thank you. All right, David, you are an attorney. Evidently. <laughs> Look at that. Careful not to perjure himself. <laughs> and you rock. We are so excited to have you on the show. I heard that. I appreciate that. <laughs> For some of us in the audience who maybe don't, aren't familiar with Comey's work, we wanted to take a minute to catch you up to speed and uh, play one of his commercials. But while we were looking for his commercial online, we also happened to find some other commercials from professions where they have taken a music genre and matched it with their advertising. So I think we're just going to go ahead and play that reel before we start this interview. So. 
Some people say I don't look like a lawyer. But David Allen Comey is a lawyer. For years, he represented big insurance companies. Yes, I defended insurance companies. But now I work for you. So if you've been injured and you have to deal with an insurance company, don't you think what I know might be very helpful to you? Auto injuries, other accidents, medical malpractice, call Comey and Morrow. So I don't look like a lawyer, but it helps me sneak up on them. Call Comey and Morrow now at 338-0900. Oh, hello. I'm Mortimer Blackwood, goth gynecologist. Menstruation's feeling morose. Trouble bearing sea. Allow me to peer into your gloomy cavern. Here at Blackwood Gynecology, our many services include urinary tract disorders, pap smears, genital piercing, female curves, earwig removal, pregnancy and family planning, and laparoscopic surgery. I may not look like a gynecologist, but I assure you, I am. Blackwood Gynecology. Just off 183, right behind the pedic. Hey, rude boy. I got a message for you. Stuck in the tank? Well, then you need a bail bondsman. That skanks. <laughs> Jail release right now. Get on the horn and call 512 Two Tone. I'm Chaz Freeman, and I'll make you a free man. <laughs> hey, I'm DJ Dogshit, Dubstep Landscaper. The lawn looking a little tired? Drop it! At least they're in other fields, so you don't have to compete with them. Thank God. Yeah. Well, that is a great commercial. I mean, your commercial is, is truly excellent, and the billboards, I think, have really taken off. How has that affected your personal life, having giant representations of your face all over town? Well, people are inviting me on to TV shows. <laughs> TV shows. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> um, I'm under my second contract where people are trying to do a reality TV show about my little life, which they see something. I, I guess there's something out there. The statesman has an article about me tomorrow. But, you know, I go to the grocery store, the 7-Eleven, yeah. and it's hard to be yeah. real anonymous anymore. So do you get a lot of yahoos going, holy crap! Yeah, I seems to get the most comments from the uh, under 50 IQ crowd. <laughs> I think the under 50 IQ crowd yell at you from across the street. The over 50 IQ crowd wait to come see you on a talk show. <laughs> yeah. So what is this reality show? Well, they don't do reality TV anymore. It's soft scripting. Right. So they want to hear the stories about you know, the crazy things that happen during my day, and they take them and bring in actors and em embellish the crap out of it, and, you know, it's really weird because it's in the middle of my day and my phone's ringing off the hook and I've got 50 emails and I've got clients waiting and then it's like, well, we need you now, and then they hustle me off to, yeah. you know, do some fake client interaction. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me reality TV isn't real? Even people's court? That's what they're telling me. You heard it here first, folks. Well, I think the, the thing that, I, that really resonated in your commercials that you talk about how you've actually worked for the insurance companies, so you learned a little bit of their, their tips and tricks. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, you know that stuff, uh, you're in good hands and like a good neighbor? That's not exactly true. <laughs> First reality TV. I fucking love that guy, by the way. It's so cool. 24, great show. Yeah. Was that a different guy, sir? No, that's, that's, a, that's the same guy. That's the same guy. 
<laughs> so they're, they're trying to present this image that they're there for you, they got your back, but in reality, they don't? Well, they do. They try to gain your trust, and since they have handled thousands of claims, and usually it's somebody's first one, they kind of lead them down the primrose path of things that screw up their claim. Right. And uh, by the time the people figure it out, a lot of times that's when they're calling me, and I've got to try to undo it. You know, but uh, yeah, it's, pre it's a pretty vicious thing. I mean, I, I uh, help the little guy against very sophisticated uh, machines. They have a lot of propaganda. I mean, everybody thinks that um, there's frivolous lawsuits. Right. And people have fraudulent claims. But I've been doing this a long time now. I'm getting a little long in the tooth. And I've yet to see a frivolous lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Now, I have seen a lot of egregious insurance claims handling ripping off, you know, a very unfortunate, sad people that have the worst time of their life. It's like David versus Goliath if David had a dreadlocked rock and roll sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. named, named David. Yeah, watch out, Goliath. So for our audience, who hopefully will not suffer any auto injuries or other accidents, what advice would you give if they find themselves in this sort of situation where they're dealing with insurance companies? Call me right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or some, get some advice right away. Because you'll talk to an adjuster. The, the famous last words, well, I'm going to try to handle it on my own. Well, it's an uneven situation. I, you got, your dad is a nuclear physicist. It's if, like... The, you're a drunk guy on 6th Street is going to actually debate your father in nuclear physics. Well, that was a tie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's an uneven playing field, and a lot of people think they're pretty smart, but it's like, you know, if you have a plumbing problem, you don't do it yourself. Yeah. I don't fix my own HVAC. If you have an insurance claim, call somebody who can help you. Sweet. Aside from the, uh, the insurance and the law, tell us a little bit about your rock and roll. You play in two bands? <laughs> yeah, in two bands. Um, yeah, I'm, I like hard rock. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I'm going to be Rob Zombie for Halloween. <laughs> yeah. So. How are you going to... So to be Rob Zombie, what do you have to change for your costume? <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to get him to stop copying my shtick. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and making movies. <laughs> yeah. Gonna Let's carry around, him, right? Carry around a lawn chair that says director on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have an upcoming gig or anything that? I go into the studio next weekend. Sweet. Yeah, pretty excited about it. It's a uh, this band called Dharma Kings, and it's in my newest band. I just sing in that band, and I've got, I've got. We're going into Wire, mm -hmm. which is like top studio in town. It's got it's analog. It has two inch tape, and the guy running our our board is. Is uh, he plays guitar? He's played with Butthole Surfers and Meat Puppets, and he's actually gonna put our little record out on his label and stuff. So I'm excited about it. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. David, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a Thanks pleasure having you. Absolute blast. Everybody, get in Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, Kay Leota.
time. Give it up for Kay Leotard. Yeah. This has been TNM Tonight. Thank you very much for coming out.